That's what I'm gonna tell you. You play with me, nigga, you right here. Remember, I'm gonna come back to wherever you at. And you ain't gonna be able to be there no more. And best believe what you talking about. That's how I move. Long Island nah. streets, he good. But when he on that street to Queens, he's the rooster of them baller blocks, you know? Yeah. My thing is, I like the. I'm me dangerous. So the rock must be out your anus. That F finna make you famous. Tripping up bangers. Hang with the bangers. Rock a flame. Power move. You could catch me red flagging, hopping out the Benz wagon. Red chucks, not giving a fuck, pin sagging. I got shot for the gang, earned my props in the gang, learnt my aim in the gang. Might as well stay in the gang. You mean more? Ooh, oh, bitch, you don't do it like that. <laughs> bitch, you don't do it like that. <laughs> Live on Pod Sun Radio right now, Phoenix, Arizona's finest podcast. You know where we celebrate real niggas daily. Right now, we rocking with a actually outside of Arizona artist. You know this brother represents Atlanta. He's from New York, actually. We here with a uh, Frenchie from Brick Squad Mafia. One, thank you for sitting down with us. Nah, it's not no Brick Squad Mafia, bro. I'm not Brick Squad Mafia, brother. Uh, that shit, not- I keep on telling y'all, stop repping that Brick Squad Mafia shit. That shit is not true. It's Brick Squad Monopoly. That's it. No Brick Squad Mafia. Mac oh. Drama is not Brick Squad, my nigga. Okay, got you. B- okay, so the BSM on the tagline, that's Brick Squad Monopoly for everybody. Brick Squad Monopoly. Right. Mac Drama came to Phoenix and tried to do some Brick Squad Mafia shit. That shit is not true. We are not that. We are not Brick Squad Mafia. Okay, what's the story behind that? I haven't even, I haven't even been, uh, heard that story. Well, this, this, the story behind that right now is me. I'm about to get ready to tell y'all. To, I'm about to get ready to tell y'all what's going on. And this is Frenchie telling y'all this is an original Brick Squad member. All right. Matt Drama is my boy, man. You know you know what I'm saying? He was my boy on the, on the street tip. You feel me? He started fucking with me on the street tip. So I right. brought that nigga around my family members. I brought him around Walker. I brought him around people that was around. So when I brought him around, he took it upon himself to say he was Brick Squad. No, you're not Brick Squad, my man. And then you go outside and make your own click that says BSM, Brick Squad Mafia. How, how did that sound if we Brick Squad Monopoly? You know what I'm saying? So he got like 80 niggas. He got people saying that they this and that. And he got people, he misle- he, he's misleading the people, man. Phoenix, if y'all can hear me out there, Phoenix, he is not Brick Squad, man. Hey, man, we appreciate that. Trust me, we all need that clarification because, you know, we all the way over here on the web. So sometimes things get distorted, you know what I'm saying? First of all, I want to thank you for sitting down with us. What's good with you, my nigga? I'm chilling, man. I'm just relaxing, G-Mac, and keeping this shit real as a thousand dollar bill. You know how I give it up. Yeah, 100, man. We see you out there running around. But uh, so for the listeners, we want to go ahead and open everybody's ears up to the real Frenchie story. So we want to take it back, you know what I mean, to the beginning as always. So we want you to uh, talk about your childhood, you know, growing up in New York. Uh, growing up in New York, you yeah, already know that uh, my uncle is DJ Hurricane, the Beastie Boys DJ, you know, uh, Jim Master J's protege. Uh, my aunt is Deborah Anthony. Actually, my cousin, but I call her my aunt. You know, her brother's Bimmy, you know what I'm saying? So Bimmy was the A&R for Def Jam at once. So me growing up, man, growing up as a little kid, I used to always see. And then my other cousin is Tacoma from Smith & Wesson. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's like I had a lot of people in my family that was already industry-wise. So growing up, I used to see Slick Rick. I used to see Jam Master J. I used to see the Lost Boys. Like I was five, seven. I was like eight, nine years old seeing these niggas come to my house. You feel me? Russell Simmons. I seen these niggas in my house. You feel me? Yeah, so you born and in this. This what made me want to be a rapper because me going outside, seeing about, and then my father was a gangster from Queens. You feel me? So it's mm-hmm. like I really, just the stories that I used to just hear made me want to be a rapper. I didn't want to never be, I couldn't be, I couldn't have a regular job who I was growing up. I was ne- not to say having a regular job is wrong because nothing is wrong when you're making it pay for yourself. If you're going to do something for yourself, there's nothing wrong with that. But me growing up with the people that was around me, it made me feel like I didn't want to do regular things that other people do. I always wanted to be extraordinary and be different. Yeah, absolutely, man. It sounds like you was pretty much born and bred straight hip-hop. I like was you. actually, yeah. You can actually say, yeah, I was 
born in the industry wise being around it but when i first started rapping and getting paid for it that's when i got signed to brick squad when i was so icy entertainment it was my first check for music like i used to be with lloyd banks the g unit i used to be with everybody i used to be a little scrappy i used to be with everybody but when i first started getting paid is when i was with miss day and aunt deb and gucci like that's when i started getting paid Okay. All right. Now, seeing that we are Phoenix, Arizona, so of course, so you were talking about being with, uh, actually, you and Lloyd Banks were cool growing up, right? Oh, yeah. Lloyd Banks is my man. He's from, uh, Queens, actually. He's from okay. South Jamaica, Queens. And, uh, he's a, he's a good friend of mine. Actually, him and my, him and my friend, they was close, close, close friends. Him and my best friend, which is Joffy. You feel me? Okay. They was close, 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 close friends. But I grew up with him under the wing to the fact that he showed me a lot of things with the G Unit thing. Like I used to be on the Masked Tour. I was on the uh, Get Rich or Die Trying, Get, Get Rich or Die Trying tour, the Hunger for More tour. I was on a lot of tours. Okay. Yeah, my uh, Phoenix, Arizona connection. My man, uh, well, my man Willie North Pole. You know Willie? He's a. Uh, I know he was on G Unit for a little bit. He was rocking with Lloyd Banks and all them, and then he actually ended up on DCP. I know he's cool with a little scrappy and all them. Are you familiar with? Oh William? yeah, I think I think I know what you're talking about. Actually, he used to be with Shaka, right? Yeah, yep, yep. He used to be with Shaka, the Ludacris manager. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that's my guy, man. That's my guy. All right, okay. <laughs> all right. So how about uh, transition? Actually, I want to start back before you actually got signed. But you was born and bred in rap. You remember what's your first project you dropped, even if it was just a tape you put out? All right, I'm going to rewind everything. <laughs> Let me just rewind it. All right. The first time, all right, I was running with, uh, Lloyd Banks is my friend, you, everybody know that, I was on the road with him, and I got a phone call from my cousin, which I call her my aunt, and her name is Deborah Andrews, and when she called me, she said, listen, I have an artist by the name of Gucci Man, and he's hot out here right now, and I don't know, because you know, I was a New York rapper, so you know, we didn't really listen to the down south music at this time. You yeah. Know? So... When she called me, it was like a gamble. She was like, listen, I don't know if you're going to like it or not, but listen, come down here, and I guarantee you, we're going to make a name. So I came down there, was hearing the music. I spit for Gucci one time. He liked it, you know what I'm saying? And he just put me on the team, and after he put me on the team, I started really liking his music. I started loving his music because it wasn't about the lyrics. It was about how blunt he was because everything he was saying, he was doing. So, And I was actually around him to see him do these things, and I was – not to say he was actually doing things, but I, it was a lot of things he said that was real, like him not, his mother wasn't around and him doing this and shit. It was certain things that was real that I see was true. You feel me? Hell yeah. And it made me like his music. I like the Gucci Man music because I went around him and I seen a lot of things he said. He lived that. You feel me? Yeah, man, that's when we, being, like I said, I got to keep reiterating, we all the way out here on the West, but that's where I got on to you was through Gucci, man, on the, uh, I'm sure this is a classic freestyle. Everybody probably hit you about this. That motherfucking So not, so Icy North, he said, you could catch oh, yeah, me red you know, flag you and hopping out red the big wagon. Red you could catch me red flag and hopping out the big fuck. wagon. Red yeah. Chuck's not giving a fuck. Pants sag and I got shot for the gang. Earned my pops for the gang. Learned my aim in the gang. I said, that nigga's cooking that shit. I seen you had, I seen the energy. I seen the hunger. Everything. So how was it, man? Like first working with Gucci, man. How many how many songs would you say y'all got together? Oh, me and Gucci, we did a lot of records, man. We got songs that's not released. Man. Like we got stuff, stuff. But you know, it's it's about it's about grinding the record, man. Because you can put a record out, man. It doesn't mean it's gonna hit to where you Absolutely. want it to hit. It's about really grinding your record. Nowadays, you can get a record with the hottest person. You can get a, you can get a record with the hottest nigga. It could be the hottest nigga right now and throw it out right now and get two people to look at it. You feel me? Yeah. It's about how you grind your record now. You feel me? Explain that to all those SoundCloud artists because they don't understand that. All right, me coming out. Just because I got signed to So Icy Entertainment and we had a single which plateaued the world, it plateaued the whole United States, I still went around him by dropping my own mixtape going dropping YouTube videos because it made my it made me hot doing my own music videos. You feel me? You have to always keep your own cameraman around. You have to mm. keep your own outside the company. You feel me? Because when you have your own, you can drop. Like so, after every time I drop something with Gucci, I will go drop my own record. You feel me? Like I drop a big record with Gucci, and then after that, I'll go drop a mixtape right outside of me dropping something with Gucci. You feel me? Hell yeah. I make a lot of sense. It's a whole different era. It's not. It's a, the current climate is nothing like 
what it was in the 90s or even the two, 2000s for that matter. It's, yeah, it's, 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 because, you know, music has changed because now I can say that now people want to see the artist now. Like, there's no way in hell you could come out with a record. Like, back in the days, they could, you could have been surprised by the artist. Like, an artist could drop a song and you ain't even see his, you, you, you ain't even have to see his face for years. And so when you see, you know what I'm saying? You can hear the song before you see his face. Now, mm-hmm. once you drop a song, we want to see your face because YouTube and all that's out there. So it just makes it everything accessible. Like, we want to see your face now. Like, you can't drop a song without people seeing your image now. Absolutely. Yeah, because if they go to your page, they're like, oh, this nigga whack. Or this, you know what I mean? Then they start not liking the song. People want to see the artist now. Back in the days, it wasn't like that. Back in the days, you could drop a song, you didn't even know how to the record. You just liked the record. And then when he performed it, it made you like him more. You feel me? Absolutely. I think that explanation That's is... That's how you got to know people from their records back in the days of putting their songs in the record. Because you like the song so much to the area. And when you called them to the area, it made them want to do that. Hell uh, yeah. I mean, that's great, man. I think all our listeners, especially because obviously we're in a real urban demographic, so I think everybody needs to hear that. But, uh, so jumping back. Yeah, everybody needs to hear that because I feel like the records be, the records are crazy now. You feel me? All, almost all of them. <laughs> everybody got a crazy record. That's why it's up to us. You got to differentiate yourself, show a little personality. That's what I say. From, but I'm obviously coming from a pers- radio perspective, but that's what I see. But I agree totally with what you're saying. But uh, but jumping back on the Frenchie storyline, so we were talking about the early So Icy days. So everybody know your cousin is Waka. Uh, how was it uh, all y'all working together in a tandem early on? Yeah, I got pictures with us in the tub together, man. <laughs> I don't want them to have the surface of the world. We used to be niggas young kids. Like, that's my baby boy. Like, it's so much things that, you know, bro, like, yo, Walker never wanted to be, Walker never wanted to even be a rapper. What? Real, real life. Yeah, this is why I respect Walker. Walker became a rapper to take care of family. Because at the time, at the time he had this, he put himself in place to be able to do the things that he can do now. That's why I respect my little cousin. Oh, yeah. How proud does it make you to see him, like, come from where he is? And he took over so many scenes at this point. The, the like, college kids. You know, Yo, you know why it make me feel good to the day? Because that's my little cousin, bro. Like, you know how that shit feel good to feel like, yo, bro, I could be, I got my own spot. But I could be arguing with, that's my little bro. How many people do you know? You know little cousins always look up to the older cousins, right? So, oh, yeah. So, so when you look up to an older cousin, you always look at him, him being the one that can be able to provide and give you things because he's the older cousin. Mm-hmm. It feels good to know that if I was beefing with my girl right now, I could leave right now and go to Georgia to my cousin's house and just relax. 100. Well, bo- yeah, what well, Boosie say, we all got bread, so if we fall, we the crushes. Facts. We all, and, and that's some real nigga. That's why I love Boosie. Boosie say real nigga shit. You're supposed to always have somebody you can crush on. Not to say that just just pick a nigga that, oh, I'm a fall off. Nah, you're supposed to always have somebody. I love one, man, because you always need somebody. I want to tell all y'all out there, man. Stop. I, I stop all this. I'm doing this myself. I did this myself. You need somebody. You cannot do everything yourself. You cannot do everything yourself. You can be self-made. You can be self-made. But when it goes down to doing things, you need a team for everything, especially when you want to be successful. It's every successful person you see, they might have cut their friends off, but to get to the top, they needed a team to get there. Man, hey, that's crazy because not only did our listeners need to hear that, you preaching directly to me and everybody, my whole crew right now. You know what I'm saying? So, I, you know, one, because because I start realizing, you know, why people are so messed up, their brains are fucked up because you'll see somebody that's successful and you'll see that he has nobody around him, so you'll start thinking to yourself, "Oh, I want to be independent because he made it by himself." No. Did you ever put in your brain, maybe he had some friends that cut him off? He had some friends that did him wrong when he got to the top, so now he's at a level that he can cut everybody off? Maybe he did that because he didn't get there by himself. Everybody needs a team. Absolutely. No, I 100% agree. So what would you say? I mean, do you see that a lot in the industry? What, I mean, Oh, yeah, people... I see it. Oh, yes, I see it a lot. I see it a lot. Because you you gotta understand, it's a lot of people that go in go in this industry with their best friends and shit. You gotta understand, a friend, friend in business. This is why they say friends in business sometimes don't mix because you are, sometimes it's always good to put your people in positions, even even if you don't, even if you're not around them a lot. You gotta mm-hmm. put them in position so you won't have to 
like, uh, how can I explain it? I can explain it like me, like me, like, boom. I will mess with, like, me bringing my brother, like, uh, if I bring my brother to the, uh, if I bring my brother to one of my shows, right? Yeah. And I bring my friends to one of my shows. Now, look how this might be. I might need my brother. I might be like, yo, bro. Uh, can you hold my bag real fast? I really need you to hold that bag. Uh, walk the bag to the stage for me. My brother might say, the fuck, I look like your bag man? I ain't your bag man. I ain't holding that shit. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, but absolutely. Your awesome. best friend would be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to hold this shit because I know I got the, I see the bigger picture. Yeah, I you can't drive. hold your bag right now because you have to go to the stage and perform. See, now, your brother's going to say, I ain't holding your fucking bag. I ain't no bag man because your brother don't see the big picture. Your brother came out the same pussy as you. Mm-hmm. That's that ego too. You see what I'm Absolutely. So sometimes you might see a person that made it to the top with a person that he never even grew up with, because these be the people that solidify, that's more solidified of being in his life than people that grew up with him. I think it's a respect thing. I think the stranger, or not even the stranger, but the friend, you know, they have a little certain more respect. And your brother should have that same respect for you. But if your brother has any like sort of ego anything of that nature, then he's going to look at you wrong way, which is fucked up. But that's what, you, what you're saying is true, man. I can't even front on that. Right. All right, so uh, all right, let's, let's get back. So before we move on to what's going on now, we'll keep it early in the beginning with the So I See Days. So uh, give us a funny story. Like some shit people don't know, you know, this podcast shit, so you can keep it one, keep it a bug, anything, something funny. Oh, man. I got so many funny days, and I remember, uh, what can I say, let me see, uh, a day that I remember. Yo, uh, yo, uh, I remember one time, right, me, Slim Duncan, and Gucci, we was in motherfucking, we was in, we was in Florida, we was in Miami, no matter of fact, Fort Lauderdale, and uh, Gucci put, uh, we gave the DJ, I gave the DJ $200, right? We gave a DJ two hundred. I gave a DJ two hundred dollars to play. Gucci, Gucci had like a new song that we wanted him to play real fast. Like, play that shit real fast. You know what I'm saying? Cause we just walked in the spot and uh, we just wanted to bless him. Like, yeah. But you know, Florida. You know, they was playing a lot of Jeezy shit. You know, and you know, Jeezy and Gucci was beefing at this time. Like, they was, you know what I mean? You know, that, you know what goes on. But uh, when we get in the spot, the nigga Gucci was like, "Hey, bro, make sure he play that shit." I walk to the DJ booth. I get a nigga a little two hundred. I'm like, "Yo, play this new record." So he look at me like I'm about to play it, bro. So it, like an hour go past while we in the, in, in, in the spot and he don't play the record. So <laughs> I walk up to the fucking DJ booth and I'm like, yo, bro, nigga just gave you $200, my nigga. Like, what's, what's wrong with you? Like, it's been an hour. So the nigga looks at me and like, I didn't I say I was going to play it? He must have been working with Jeezy or something. Because he was like, didn't I say I'm going to play it? I said, oh, bro, don't play with me, bro. Play that record. He said, I got you. I walk back to Gucci, right? Why did the DJ say, the DJ said, this is what happens when you get motherfuckers. This is what happens when you get the DJ mad. He played Gucci. He played Jeezy's song, Stay Strapped, dissing Gucci. Stay strapped, stay strapped, stay strapped. <laughs> and we just paid this nigga $200, my nigga. Yo, bro, Slim Duncan, God bless his soul. Slim Duncan ran to the fucking security booth and punched that nigga so fast. Yo, Slim Duncan punched the nigga out of his boots. Like, look, look, all I seen was Slim Duncan punch him with a right. And the nigga boots was on the turntables. <laughs> I don't know how his boots got on the turntables, but Slim Duncan knocked that nigga out of his boots and put that shit on his turntables, my nigga. Yo, hey, rest in peace, Slim Duncan, man. Like, man, rest watch in peace, from Slim out Duncan, here, son. Real nigga, man. When I seen him out there on the on the street, uh, seeing that nigga's what Slim Gotti, Kevo Gotti, whatever his name was. I was like, yo, one on one, this nigga showed up, didn't put, yo, yeah, rest in peace, Slim Dunk. That's a funny ass story, though, man. All right, back. Yo, move. That's that shit, that shit gonna marinate for sure, bro. I might, I might have to edit, edit it up and make that the clip. You feel me? Facts. All right, but uh, all right. So moving forward, moving along. All right, so moving past, what, what's going on now musically? The new projects, what you got coming up? Actually, I have a project, French Revolution. You know what I'm saying? I got a, I got a uh, mixtape called French Revolution that I'm dropping. It's called Revolution because I'm feeling like I'm changing as a man. I'm not a teenager anymore. You know what I mean? I'm older now, so it's like I'm 30. I'm 31 years old, so it's like, what am I supposed to still be a child? No, but I'm still. I still have things that I I, I still know what children go through because I once was a child. So 
I still know the music what to give them. I'm giving them just strictly, uh, what's it called? Uh, it's just called real reality rap. I'm just gonna rap about the things that I did, the things that I, the plateaus that I've, that I've got to, like, and I'm still trying to elevate. I'm just trying to let the people know that when you start working, it's never to end until your eyes close. You're supposed to continue working forever. Don't get comfortable and just sit back like I made it. No, no, because somebody else has to make it too. You didn't make it until somebody else makes it. Facts. You didn't make it until you made somebody. You ain't make it until you made it somebody else some, somebody. You're not a boss until when you make somebody else a boss. Facts. You got to understand That's that. That's what makes you a boss. So, Making man, other people bosses makes you a boss. Since we own bosses and you're saying that, and I think that's a good thing to touch on. So for people that's into the industry, you're actually in the industry. So we're talking talking to the listeners who are just into the industry and don't know what's really going on. Who would you say are some of your favorite executive CEOs or label themselves as bosses who actually take care of their people? Actually, I love everybody, man. I, I, I love the music, man. Deborah Anthony, that's my lady. You know what I'm saying? And I always got to thank Gucci, even though we went through problems, even we go through problems. But I still got to thank Gucci for even giving me a plateau. Even that, you know what I'm saying? Like, Deborah Anthony and Gucci played a major part of my life. You know what I'm saying? Even my, my friend Lloyd Banks, you know what I mean? 50 Cent. It was a lot of them that encouraged me. They made me want to do things that I do now, you know? So it's like. No matter what, you know what I mean. I can never bite the hand that feed me. You know what I'm saying. I I, I can never I can never bite the hand that fed me because I'm on my own now and I'm feeding myself and I'm feeding my peers. So it's like I just I was thankful for the plateau that I was given to even start. You know, I started and I never turned back. Okay. Yeah. Now anybody that bites the hand that feed them, I mean that says more about them than the hand that they bite. And I would say, but at the same time, things always change. You know what I mean? So. You also got to be wary of that, you know, be respectful, but you got to, you were men, you know what I mean? Facts. So everything changes. But, uh, all right, so let's say best case scenario, give us a five-year plan for Frenchie. Five-year plan for Frenchie, uh, I plan next year to be at the Grammys. I plan the year after that to have my own uh, cannabis company. Uh, on, yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do to my cannabis, and I plan on. Uh, I really want to make. This might sound strange, but I want to. I want to. I want to build my own supermarket, bro. Black owned. Super, I want to have a, a a black owned supermarket, like like hey. piggly wigglies and shit. All I shit down south. I want to have shit like fucking niggly wigglies. <laughs> bro, that's dope. I kid you not. <laughs> oh 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 oh. Or the rascals or something like giants. I want to do something like giving back to my people to the fact that you can go to a store and you see your own people in there and it's no fights. It's nothing mad. It's, you don't get angry when you see your own person because the things that we do, we go into our own companies and, and beef with each other to the fact that every time a black person sees another black person, they want to hurt them. Like, come on, no. Like, and not to be, I'm not a racist at all, but it's, it's a shame that we see, it's a shame that black people see white people and straighten up and see their own people and cut up. You feel me? That's what's not right to me. I feel like everything has to be equal. Make everything equal. White people are not bigger than us. We're not bigger than white people. We're all equal as people. You know what I'm saying? Only thing that makes us different is money. Money makes it different. But by the end of the day, if you was able, if I'm able to get to your money, I can still rip that shit like a dollar, like a paper bill. Because the same money that you got is rippable. You feel me? You can't rip my soul. You can't rip my flesh. You can cut through it, but you can't rip it. Money is ripped, and you can burn it. You feel me? You can't burn a soul, not unless God wants to burn it. So I feel like you're, just you being a person and a human being, you're equal. We're, it's time for us to put ourselves being equal. When you look at a person like you're not bigger than him, why would you have a problem with him? You don't think he's a problem or a threat because you feel like he's your neighbor. You feel like he's a part of you. You're not bigger than him. It's time for us to put other people on our plateaus, even if we don't want to do it. It's time for us to just to throw racism in the garbage, man. That shit needs to throw in the garbage, and we need to look at it. Everybody the same. Everybody's the same. It's all about your ambition. It's all about your power, and it's all about you, who you are, to keep going. You have to keep yourself going and not worry about what color he is. Why is he this? Why is he? No, it's time for us to get up and rise ourselves. You feel me? We have to rise.
Absolutely. Do you get a lot of it, or do you see a lot of it being somebody who travels a lot? Racism? Hell yeah. I see the most. People like, like, the only reason why sometimes I get, because you got to understand, even though it's racism, uh, people like artists, people like rappers, people like entertainers. So I might get more, I might get le- more leeway than a person that's working a nine to five. You feel me? Yeah, absolutely. Like me going to the airport. I done seen people have people wait in line, but then know my song and be like, oh, shit, and put me to the front of the line, you know? Yeah. And it's like, it's just a privilege because music, people love your music. Sometimes racism, I think music can stop racism, you know? Yes. You can be uh, yeah. black and yeah. drop a song, and it'd be the whitest kid in the world that listens to your song and love your music. You feel mm-hmm. me? Yeah, absolutely. I see it in crowds all the time when I be watching r- rappers perform. And that's what I, what I was saying about Walker. Walker transcends race, everything. He's like Snoop. Facts. <laughs> that, that boy right now, he's an EDM right now. You feel me? Man, I think it's beautiful, and he, man. Oh, and he's right. born right now. He's, li- he's living his life. He has his family. You know, Walker is maturing into a man. That boy is a man. Oh, man, that's he beautiful. went from a boy. That's the that's the that's the definition of coming from a boy to a man. For real, from blood right. and gun sounds to now, man. That's like that's uh, well, Jay Z to Sean Carter, nigga. <laughs> and now he's the def- I look at him as the def- he's the definition of love in hip hop. That. That's it's love in hip hop. All that other stage shit that be on it. That's lo- he's that's love in hip hop because. He loves what he do. He loves his pop. He loves his woman. He put her a part of the industry to the fact of now they're both generating. Now they're both bringing to the table. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, that's, I think that's awesome. All right, so before we, before we start wrapping up, I want to switch gears real quick. Let me ask you, are you, are you in the sports? Uh, nah. I'm not. No, it's about the Thunder, Paul George and Carmelo and Russell Westbrook. But if you're not into it, leave that one alone. Facts. Ah, what you know, said? What would you say? Say it again. <laughs> I said I wanted to ask you about the Thunder if they could beat the Warriors. You know what I mean? Because I'll be fucking with my little uh, my co-host who not who not here, but he's gonna be excited to hear this one. Oh uh, no, I, uh, I don't. Really, well, I, I, my cousin is on the uh, Detroit Lions. You ever heard of Darius Slay? Yeah, Darius Slay. Man, my, I'm an Arizona Cardinals fan. We just played them a couple weeks ago and they beat us, and I was pissed. But yeah, number twenty three, he's a bad boy. Yeah, twenty three. That's my blood cousin, bro. If that's you look crazy. on Instagram, you don't see me. You ain't seen me write him, and I just wrote him yeah. and said I'll come to all your games, and he said no dice, cuz. No, yeah, I seen it, but I didn't know y'all was related before that, man. Nah, you, that's my. I got a royal that, family. That's, nah, that's my cousin, bro. That's my blood cousin, bro. That's crazy. Well, that's I, why I told you my family was made like this, bro. Like, I call him blood, but it's my. That's my uh, my mother's my mother's husband. My mother's husband. He's my stepfather, but that's my stepfather's first cousin. You feel me? Wow. So that's my Darius Slay is my cousin. That's my we are related, you know? The family is good. Yes, the family's good. So we're just doing what we gotta do, bro. That's great, man. That's black excellence. All right, so we're gonna do just a, a quick let's learn about French before we let you go. So just some uh quick facts for the people. So what's your favorite movie? Uh my favorite movie is The Predator. The Predator. That's different. Okay. I used to like that shit. That was my best movie growing up. Hey, matter of fact, while we on it, you know what? Because you kind of entrenched in the Atlanta scene. I don't know if you know any directors out there or what, but Atlanta has been missing that hood movie forever. Atlanta does not have right. that paid in full, that boys in the hood, that shot to that. Yes, they I, do. Yes, they do. Which one? You remember? The Bluff. Nigga, remember that song, The Bluff? Snow yeah, the Bluff. Yeah, that, that's document. That was like a more documentary style. I mean, it's like cinematic, something that can generate hundreds of millions of dollars like those movies did. I'm telling you, somebody got to do it. Spark it. <laughs> real, no, the right. real Atlanta. You know what I mean? No, you're right. All right, but, um, so, yeah, okay, so mm-hmm. the, the Predator. All right, who was your favorite rapper coming up? I never had a favorite rapper. I just had, I just loved everybody. I loved music, period. If you had a fight song, I was fucking with you. Okay. Who's the baddest chick in the game? Huh? I said, who's the baddest chick in the game? 
the baddest chick in the game. Meaning like what? Like attitude wise and just nah, nah. Like, I mean, you get like all around total type. Like she could be a rapper, she could be a singer, she could just be a uh, inner personality. Like just a, I mean, give that shit right now. Give it to my cousin's wife, Tammy. Yeah, okay, Walker. Okay, nice shine moment for I her. I give it to her. Uh, that she's like my sister. You feel me? Like, and she's been through a lot with my brother. She's been through a lot with my cousin, man. And look, if she, when you see her on that show, she does not look like no chicken head. She don't look like no, like you get what I'm saying. She really treats herself like a woman. You feel yeah. me? So she's my, one of the baddest women, and and she's in the industry that kisses. That song kisses is is crazy right now. You feel me? All these kisses is crazy. And my daughter's mother loves. I give her. I give it to Tammy right now for being one of the baddest in the industry. Women. Hey. Shout out Tammy, man, 100%. All right, and actually, before I let you go, I did, I meant, I forgot to ask you. You was reading from the book uh, about what, Nicki Minaj's book. What was that about? I didn't get to really catch the full gist of it. No, that's that, go, 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 go in Gucci Man book. Gucci Man shit is, uh, go into his, uh, his new book, and, and it's shit called Making, Making, Making the Machine. And read that. Making the Machine, okay. Making what was that machine, specific? Man. What was that excerpt? I, I want to remember. I try to look at it. Oh, now you gotta look at it. He just he, he was just talking about how he met Nicki Minaj, and he was and when, the, when me and him was on the show, and Nicki Minaj came running to us talking to the whatever he was saying. Y'all gotta read that shit. Y'all gotta read that shit. I'm Nicki used to be around there. All right, I'm gonna check it out. Was it was it true? Nicki's real. Nicki, yeah. I can say Nicki's a real person. I fuck with Nicki. Okay. All right, man. Hey, man, I'll tell you this. Well, you got the floor now, so you can give shout-outs to anybody you want to give shout-outs to, talk about anything you want to talk about. Squad, squad, squad. You already know what it is, man. I give a shout-out to everybody that's fucking with my music and everybody that's fucking with me. Squad in the building, man.